It might surprise you to learn that Ryan Gosling, for most of his career, hasn't really been a box office star, even though he has been an A-list actor for well over a decade. Rather, it seems as though he's preferred to do smaller movies over the course of his career. He's only been in a handful of movies whose budgets have been more than 100 million, Barbie, The Gray Man, and Blade Runner 2049. Rather, it seems as though he's preferred doing indie and low to mid budget movies, which I think is an interesting choice. Gosling is one of those child actors that turned out all right. He attended an audition for, and got a role on, Disney's The Mickey Mouse Club in 1993, where he acted alongside others that would also rise to fame alongside him, most notably Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and Justin Timberlake. He took on a number of TV roles over the following years before landing some of his first major film roles, a supporting role in Remember the Titans, and a lead role in The Believer, which was critically well received. Gosling also considers it to be one of his most important film roles yet, saying that it was, quote, the film that kind of gift wrapped for me the career that I have now, end quote. One of his next films was Murder by Numbers, which didn't fare well critically or commercially, but earned Gosling personal praise. However, it was 2004's The Notebook, where he starred alongside Rachel McAdams, that Gosling got mainstream attention. The film was a financial success, a hit with fans, and is considered one of the most romantic movies ever made. In 2006, he starred in Half Nelson, an indie success that did well critically and made almost $5 million on a budget of 700000 The film earned Gosling his first Best Actor in a Lead Role nomination at the Academy Awards. His next film, Fracture, was a critical and commercial success, while Lars and the Real Girl earned him personal acclaim yet again. Gosling had been acting for a decade straight at this point and decided to take a short break. He had no releases in 2008 and 2009, and his first movie back was 2010's Blue Valentine, opposite Michelle Williams, a critical and commercial success. He was also in All Good Things, which bombed critically and commercially. 2011 was a great year for Gosling, though, and saw him in three of his most successful acclaimed movies yet. Crazy Stupid Love, a romantic comedy where he acted opposite Steve Carell, Drive, an action film which is considered one of the best movies of 2011, and The Ides of March, a political drama where he starred alongside George Clooney and Philip Seymour Hoffman. The three very different roles showed that Gosling had impressive acting range. 2012's The Place Beyond the Pines did well critically and commercially, while Gangster Squad, which saw him reunite with Emma Stone, did alright commercially but not critically. He reunited with director Nicholas Winding Refn for Only God Forgives, which probably made its money back at the box office but split critics. In 2014, he took a shot at directing with Lost River. It did not go well. After mixed reception at Cannes, Warner Brothers considered shopping it off before releasing it in select theaters and sending it to video on demand. Gosling has not tried directing again. But since Lost River's flop, he has been on a hell of a ride, doing some of his best work critically and commercially to date. In 2015, he had The Big Short, which is based off a book of the same name by Michael Lewis, who also wrote Moneyball. The film was a critical and commercial success and got plenty of nominations at the Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director, and one for Best Adapted Screenplay. Next was The Nice Guys, where he starred alongside Russell Crowe. The movie probably didn't make its money back, but was a critical hit. In 2016, he appeared in La La Land. The film was a phenomenon, grossing $472 million on a budget of $30 million. He reunited with Emma Stone for it and was directed by Damien Chazelle. The movie turns Chazelle into the youngest Best Director winner at the Academy Awards at just 32 and is considered one of the best movies of the 21st century so far. In 2017, he appeared in one of my favorite Gosling movies, Blade Runner 2049, directed by Denis Villeneuve. The film, like the original Blade Runner, was a critical hit, but didn't do well commercially. Though, if it's anything like its 1982 predecessor, this movie will surely have an impact in time. It's a masterpiece and one of the best films of 2017, and it, deservedly, won Best Cinematography at the Academy Awards for Roger Deakins and Best Visual Effects for John Nelson, Gerd Nefzer, Paul Lambert, and Richard R. Hoover. Gosling worked with Chazelle again for 2018's First Man, where he played Neil Armstrong. Here's another movie that was considered one of the best of that year and appeared on multiple top 10 lists. 
It also earned Gosling his second nomination for Best Actor at the Academy Awards. He followed that with The Gray Man for Netflix, which, with a $200 million budget, is his most expensive film to date. The film got plenty of viewers, clocking more than a quarter billion hours within a few months of its release, but did not do well with critics. His most recent film is also his most financially successful at the box office, 2023's Barbie, where he plays Ken, opposite Margot Robbie's Barbie. The movie has made close to $1.5 billion at the box office so far, and both Robbie and Gosling received critical acclaim for their roles. The two are set to reunite for an Oceans movie set in the 1960s. Gosling has had quite the career so far, and if it's anything to go by, he's sure to have a long one still. I'm interested to see where he goes, and especially to see if he decides to direct again. After all, one should not let one failure get in the way of what might be a phenomenal career as a director. Even if he decides against it, though, I think we're in for plenty of phenomenal performances in the future. If nothing else, Ryan Gosling has proved himself to be one of the best actors of his generation.